سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب عمل يقربنا إلى حبك يا رحم الراحمين اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a beneficial gathering for us by which we all are inspired to keep on this path, this journey towards ibadah and this journey back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ameen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make this a gathering by which we increase our knowledge, our understanding, and that that understanding actually becomes a catalyst, a motivation towards change and becoming the best believer that we can be, inshallah ta'ala. Um, Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he brings up the next hurdle about the things that will impede our journey, the things that are going to get in the way of our journey back to Allah. Last week, uh, we spoke about people, and we spoke about how Although Allah has blessed us with beautiful relationships, it is often people that get in our way towards ibadah. And we went in detail and spoke about the importance of solitude and the importance of having good company. Uh, this week, it's a bit different though. Uh, because Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, he brings up one of the, the fiercest enemies that we will all face on this journey towards ibadah. One of the fiercest things that will stop us in this journey of worshiping Allah, becoming a, a sincere believer, devoting your life to Allah, one of the most d difficult things is what we call in Arabic, anafs, anafs. And I see some of y'all nodding, so you know what that is, but some of us may not be so familiar with the Arabic term. And so when we refer to the nafs, what we're talking about, uh, Imam Busiri, he says it best in his Al-Burda, Qasida. He says, Al-Nafsu Katifl. That the nafs is this thing inside of you that's like a child. And that is by far the best analogy to understand what this nafs is. This nafs is these inner appetites that we have within us. These inner appetites that only care about the immediate pleasure, only care about what feels good right now, what, what, what pleases me right now. It's literally the toddler inside of all of us. And the Quran and the Rasul وسلم, have spoken extensively about the importance of a concept called mujahadatun nafs, fighting the nafs, going against your desires, going against what your nafs wants. There are a few uh, hadith I want to share with you before we get into what Imam Ghazali is saying. Imam Ghazali says, uh, there's a hadith where the Rasul والسلام, said, Al-Mujahid man jahada nafsahu lillah. The true mujahid. Who's a mujahid? A mujahid is somebody who fights in the war against enemies of, of the deen. But the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he clarified, he said, the real mujahid is not just the one who can fight external enemies, but the real mujahid. And this is where all of us need to do true mujahida. Because as we all try to worship more, there's things inside of us, trauma, issues, relationship problems that get in the way of our ibadah. But until you do jihad of your nafs and you dig deep inside and, 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 and untie those knots inside, you can't come before Allah on the day of judgment and Allah says, why didn't you pray? And you go, well, my dad. Why didn't you read Quran? Oh, my first hips teacher. Like, nah, yo, you got to stand up for yourself on the day of judgment. And I think when we talk about mujahida to nafs, normally we talk about, oh, force yourself to do ibadah. Force yourself to do ibadah. And I'm going to talk about that, no doubt. But there's another type of mujahida, which is the mujahida to reflect inner, to go inside and see what it is that's causing me to lash out. What it is that's causing me to be so jealous of people. Why am I a hater, yo? What is it that made me that way? And a lot of us don't like to look in the mirror until we put makeup on. A lot of us don't like to look in the mirror until we cover up the flaws. But mujahida is all about taking a sincere look at that man or woman that's in the mirror every day that you wake up. And so Imam Ghazali, I'm going to jump straight into it. I want to share one hadith. Uh, the hadith is a weaker narration, but the meaning is strong. It's narrated by Imam Bayhaqi. That the Prophet ﷺ, he was coming back from the battle of Tabuk. This was a very difficult battle that the Muslims had to fight. And it's a weaker narration, but the meaning is strong, y'all. 
and there are other narrations to support the meaning. <clears throat> he's coming back from this battle, and everybody's bloody, everybody's sweaty, sweaty, everyone's tired, injured, maybe we lost people. And so we're on our way back, and we feel good. We, we, we strive so hard. We fought in the path of God. We stood up for justice. And the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he wanted to get everyone to reflect inwardly. He says, Raja'na min jihad al asghar ila jihad al akbar. He goes, Y'all, we're actually leaving the lower jihad, struggle, strive, effort, and going to the higher jihad. What is the higher jihad? He said, he said jihad al nafs. It's the jihad uh, fighting yourself, it's the jihad against yourself. So let's get into it, inshallah ta'ala. Let's see what Imam Ghazali has to teach us about this major hindrance that comes in our way, our own nafs, and how we can learn to overcome this. Imam Ghazali says, Thumma alayka. He says, then, thereafter, you've got rid of people, you got rid of the dunya, now you're able to worship. But you got a problem. Inwardly, inwardly, there's a lot that's stopping you. He says, Asakam Allah wa iyana, may Allah protect you and us. The next thing you have to do is bilhadri min hadhihi nafs al amara bisu. You have to protect yourself from this lower self that is always beckoning you to do evil. Now, what we mean by evil is not something that may immediately look evil. In fact, the nafs often tells us to do something that looks immediately rather good, but long term. What's the bigger problem? What's behind that bag of Doritos? No? All right, y'all ain't struggling with that. That's what my nuffs be struggling with. That bag of Doritos, man. At 11 p.m. when you ain't supposed to have no more carbs. <laughs> nuffs is like, yo, it's just one chip. It's never one chip. <laughs> Amara bisu. Listen, the Quran tells us there's three levels of the nuffs. Listen closely. The lowest level is called Amara bisu. It's the nuffs that's always telling you to do evil. Telling you to look at that, do this, don't get up for this, don't do this. It's always pushing you towards evil. It never ever likes to do good. Never ever likes to do good. That's the nuts we're going to talk about today. But the second level, because I want you to see what you can aspire to. The second level of the, of the nafs is what the Quran calls lawama. It's the nafs that it strives for good, but it slips up. And when it slips up, it's like, man, I slipped up. So it feels, it has ihsas, it feels the effect of when it does wrong. And it's like, man, we got to be better tomorrow. We got to level up tomorrow. We can't let this happen again. That's where we want to be, I think, y'all. We, we don't want to be at the point where we don't feel the evil that we do. We want to feel the evil. We want to be able to feel when the nafs is telling us to wrong. And the third level, Allah speaks about it. Surah Al-Balad, Ya ayyatuha nafsul mutma'inna. Fajr, thank you. Surah Al-Fajr. Ya ayatuha nafsul mutma'inna. The nafsul mutma'inna is the nafs that when you tell it where to go, it goes there. See, what y'all got to understand is like this nafs, Imam Ghazali says that this nafs is like your riding beast, y'all. We in Texas, right? Represent. It's like your horse. And you need this thing to go to where you need to get to. So, so here's the crazy part. Let, let's talk to what he says. He says, he says that, uh, He goes, this is one of the worst enemies that you can have. What is this inner enemy? He says, and the, and the problems that this nafs will put you in are the worst type of problems. Addiction, drugs, alcohol. The worst type of problems. It comes from the nafs. الْأَشْيَاءِ but to cure this nafs, whew, it's difficult. And that's why I said we need, we need to reflect. We need to be able to go inside of ourselves and see what it is that's stopping us. He goes, there's two reasons why it's so hard to fight your nafs. Number one, He goes, you know this dunya, when we were talking about other people, it's an external enemy. When we were talking about dunya, it's an external enemy. When we were talking about shaitan, it's an external enemy. But this one, oh, this is hard because this is me. This is who I am. That love for Doritos is me, y'all. I can't kill that. I can't destroy that because it is my actual self. 
So he says one of the reasons why it's so hard, he says, وَلِسُّ إِذَا كَانَ مِنْ دَاخِلِ الْبَيْتِ عَزَّةِ الْحِيلَةُ He says when the, when the thief is inside the company, that's the hardest thief to get rid of. He knows every, he knows the passwords. It's the hardest one. He goes in another reason, and this is what I think all of us need to focus on. He says the second reason why this one is so difficult that this is actually an enemy you love. This is actually an enemy that you love because it's in you, it's you. So what's wrong with that? I love myself. I, well, the problem is, well, insan ammi an mahbubihi, and a person is blind of the faults of someone they love. Think about what that means to us, y'all. You're trying to become better. Everyone in this room, you walked in this room today because you are dedicated to become a better believer. You want to leave here today better than you were when you walked in the door. Is that not the truth for everyone in this room? Even if your friend dragged you and said the vibes are nice. <laughs> I know. I already know. Whatever. Cool. It's all good. For whatever reason you came, you want to leave better. But you can only become better when you realize that it's, you're not the standard. There's a standard outside of you that you're reaching towards. So he says, you love the nafs so much that you start to excuse everything that it does and you don't see any faults with it whatsoever. And he shares a poem. He says, You can't even see the problems. And I'll say something here, y'all. We often need someone else to help us see the problems and we often need somebody else to help us heal the problems. For real. You need somebody you could reach out. And I'm going to talk about this in a moment. You need somebody that you could reach out to in order to help you notice what's wrong with you. Because this nafs will tell you you're good. You're good. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. But your friend, someone that loves you, and when I say love you, I mean like, like loves you. Like the people that love you call you out. The friends that love you will pull you to the side like, girl, you got something on your face. Yo, bro, 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 clean up. Yo, clean, clean up. Yo, you got something in your beard. They look out for you. Even if it hurts your feelings right now, long term, you're going to love me. You ever been walking around school all day? Got through like three classes, three meetings at work, and finally the Euclid mirror, you're like, oh, dang, yo. And all those people, you're like, they all haters. Every one of y'all is a hater because you saw the abe and you didn't want to fix it. Either my character is so bad that I can't take correction or you're superficial that you don't even want to correct me. You was in the cut watching like. <laughs> <laughs> For real. So, so, so we, need, we need someone. We need someone. And subhanAllah, I read a quote by Wahab bin Munabbah. It, it shocked me. I send this quote to my sheikh. He was like, he said to me, he said, this, if people understood this, their spirituality would change. Wahab bin Munabbah, he says, he says, If you don't take nothing from tonight, take this, yo. Wahab bin Munabbah, he's from the Tabi'een. He goes, an intellectual Muslim must not be heedless from four times of the day. Four actions of the day. Number one, sa'atun yunaji rabbahu. A moment in the day that you talk quietly to your Lord. Yunaji is like, like, you know, it reminds me one moment where the Prophet والسلام, he was laying next to Aisha. They were snuggled up, you know, all warm. And he says to her in her ear, Ya Aisha, da'ni unaji rabbi. Ya Aisha, if you permit me, I would like to just go and whisper to my Allah. Leaving his beloved for his beloved. Leaving his beloved for his beloved, yo. And what's she going to say, yo? Of course, go ahead. In fact, the narrations say that he would pray and the room was small. Some of y'all don't get married till you get a house already. That ain't prophetic. <laughs> Move into that one bedroom together, yo. The Prophet I said, would be praying to Hajjit. And Aisha says, when he went to Sajda, he would poke me. I'll move my feet. He could do Sajda. Tight house. 
he would poke me. I moved my feet. I could say he could do sajda. Allahu Akbar. Tell me, I'm like, why wasn't she praying? Get out, chill out, relax. <laughs> Give the sister a break, mashallah. Ummahat al mu'minin, radiallahu anha. Mashallah. She's the uloom, bahir uloom, mashallah. Anyways, four hours everyone needs in their life. And they're not necessarily an hour, but four moments. Number one, sa'atun yunaji rabba. You need a, a moment that you talk to Allah. And I'm going to tell you when that moment should be. That moment should be before Fajr, y'all. Yup. Especially with this conversation about fighting the nafs. And don't tell me you can't get up. Because if you had a flight, you would. You already know you can make that flight. You ain't missing that flight. So you don't tell me I don't. I, oh, Shake, I, I can't Fajr me? Uh -uh. <laughs> no, if you had a flight, you would not miss it. What that means, and I don't mean this to accuse, or, or, but what it means is it doesn't have enough importance yet. That's all. And we just have to lift that up. We have to make it more important in our lives. And why do I say before Fajr? Because as we talk about the nafs, giving up sleep for the sake of God is the most pressing thing on your soul. <laughs> Waking up at nighttime. Listen, I was just on the phone with a close friend of mine. And he's like, Shay, tell me about Qiyamul Layl. And I'm like, dang, I'm slacking, right? I'm like, well, this, that, I shared some stuff. He was like, bro, I'm on it now. And he's like, every day it gives me something different. Nah, y'all ain't get it. Every day, that moment with God before everyone in the world wakes up, that moment where I sacrifice sleep, alarm went off, I got up, nobody knows about it. I made wudu, and I'm sitting there on my prayer rug. I raise my hands. That moment right there when you sacrifice, now listen to this, when you sacrifice your, soul, your own pleasure for the sake of God, watch what happens. Later on that day, somebody's backbiting. You're like, nah, bro, I'm, I'm good. Why? I just got up at 4 a.m. I was getting it in. You know the days that you run or work out, and then somebody brings some cake to you? You look at the cake, you be like, that's 400 calories. I just ran 500. Nah, bro, I'm good. <laughs> when you sacrifice on the nafs for the sake of Allah, those sins, you be like, I'm good, Habibi, I'm good. You see the psychology there. I tell you, the day you work out early and you count your calories, you're like, oh, I just burnt 700. Ooh, killed it. Somebody brings something to you, you're like, that's a whole workout right there. When you wake up for Qiyamah late in the middle of the night and nobody knows but you, man, you feel different that day. And then when opportunities of sin come, you're like, man, I, I ain't trying to sacrifice my Qiyamah late. And, and he's going to talk about this because when you step on the nafs, a response is Allah gives you tawfiq to more actions. We'll talk about that in a minute. What's the second hour, y'all? So you need an hour in the day, not an hour literally, but a moment where it's just you and Allah, where you could be your true self. I feel like we all wear masks, but there's a moment where we just, with Allah. Number two, we're going to talk about this, which is a moment in the day where you do muhasaba. Ya shabab, ya shabab. Something that our ummah always did. And I'm saying this because I think we are on something big, y'all. This next generation of Muslims in America is about to make, yo, it's, it's going to be lit, y'all. <laughs> and you just need to be in on the train before it comes. Brothers in here converted. Brothers, I converted five years ago. Like, subhanAllah, Islam is spreading. And we need to uphold what our forefathers gave us. One of the things they gave us is a concept of muhasaba. Learn this word. It means to take yourself to account. What did I do? What didn't I do? Imam, Imam Ghazali, he goes, muhasaba is you look at your capital, you look at your profit, you look at your losses. You look at your time, that's your capital. How much time you got left, yo? Then you look at your profit. What good deeds did you do today? And then you look at your losses, man. Every day, every day. Just the same way you open that Chase account, you'd be like, just checking to make sure it's there. <laughs> Muhasaba of the nafs. So number one, a moment in the day where you just talk to Allah. Number two, a moment in the day where you check yourself. 
And we're going to talk about this more because the nafs, the nafs is shady. We'll talk about that. Number three, are you ready for this? Wasa'atan yufdi fiha ila al-ikhwani hilladina yukhbirunahu bi uyubihi wa yusaddiqunahu ala nafsihi. He says, number three, a moment in the day where you go kick it with your boys. Huh? Everyone here was like, wait, I, was about, I thought it was like liquor. I thought it was like Quran. You just co- told me to call up Ahmed and kick it with him? <laughs> For the sister to call up Fatima? Okay. But look what he says. Not any person. Not any person, y'all. Who? Yukhbirunahu bi uyubihi. The friend that's going to tell you about your faults. Wa yusaddiqunaka fi nafsik. And tell you the real deal about yourself. Not the sickle fence. Not the people that just tell you what you want to hear. A lot of us don't have those people in our life. Find one. 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 My wife do it for me. <laughs> Tell me the real. You slacking. You this, that. I'm like, okay, do my islah, please. Now nah, she's amazing, mashallah. This is beautiful because... SubhanAllah, why this is so important, we have to realize that being around believers is a part of our spiritual, our spiritual progression. Being around, going, kicking it with the brothers, that's part of your growth. So long as we all understand we got to keep it real with one another. But don't go walking up to people correcting them. Build the relationship first. You got to have permission to do that. Build that relationship first. And number three, are you ready? Four, my bad. Wasa'atun yakhlu bayna nafsahu wa bayna ladhatihi fi ma yahillu wa la yuhram. Ajeeb. And a moment in the day that you let yourself indulge between you and what you enjoy so long that is halal. Wait, Sheikh, come on. You're supposed to be teaching us spiritual growth. Part of spiritual growth is those moments that you... See, Imam Ghazali says... That if you want to train this nafs, y'all, you ready? Today is about this nafs. I want you to leave ready to reform and change. Imam, Imam Ghazali says if you want to trade, train the naf, nafs, we don't kill the nafs in ge- this generation. This is the generation we don't kill the nafs anymore. We don't, we don't like stomp out every pleasure. But you know what you do? You bargain with it. Oh, you want coffee in the morning? Well, I want to hajjud. This is, I'm telling you, game-changing stuff, y'all. You want coffee? Who doesn't want that coffee, man? If you don't want, you got to dip, yo. This, this is the culture here. You want that coffee? You know that first sip when it just like, relax? That rain was like. You tell the nafs, this is beautiful. It's called musharata. You place a condition. You go, oh, you want, oh, oh. You like coffee, huh? You may, if you get me up for fudger. I got you. I got you. See, here's the deal. What is our objective? Our objective with the nafs is I want you to do what I want you to do. Because this is what's good for me. The the Quran tells us that a person on the day of judgment will be yelling, screaming, cursing his hand, cursing his thigh, cursing his feet, saying, I did those sins for your pleasure. And now we're both in hellfire. I did that for you. No, we want this body to be in Jannah. So we're trying to take it to its highest point because if we just let the nafs run, it will destroy us, y'all. I've lived a life of kufr before, of just doing whatever I felt like doing. Just do it. Nike in our head all, all the day. Like, that's all we hear, just do it. So that's how we lived. I'm telling you, you will self-destruct. Give a bag of cookies to my kids, <laughs> the dentist in the room like, yeah, give it, give it, give it, give it. <laughs> Go ahead. I got you later. I got to lock the pantry, y'all, because that's the nafs. It will self-destruct if you just give it what it wants. So Imam Ghazali, rahimahullah ta'ala, 
And so, so those four hours, I want y'all to remember those four hours because those four hours are our spiritual reformation. That one moment for God, that one moment where you reflect on where you're going in life, that next moment where you kick it with good people who will tell you what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right. And last, the moment where you allow yourself to indulge in the things that your nafs desires, that's halal. Why? So you can gain strength to do more ibadah. See how perfect our deen is? This is, this is my whole passion. It's like people have misunderstood what it meant to be a righteous believer. Our, our deen is a real deen that you live. Subhanallah. Let's go forward. Bismillah. So he says, uh, he says that, فَإِذَا يَحْسْتَحْسِنِ الْإِنسَانِ مِنْ نَفْسِهِ كُلَّ قَبِيحِ He's like, you love yourself so much that every wretched thing within you, you excuse, you write off, you, 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 you love it. It's amazing. You'll never notice the faults that are within yourself. Subhanallah. He's like, your nafs is so close to throwing you into every fadiha. What's a fadiha? Humiliation. Humiliation. If you just follow it, it will, it will humiliate you. He says, ثُمَّ أَقُولُ تَأَمَّلُ He says, I say to you, think. أَيُّهَا الرَّجُلْ أَوْ إِمْرَأَ نُقْتَةً وَاحِدَةً I want to point out one thing to you. وَهِيَ أَنَّكَ إِذَا نَذَرْتَ وَجَدْتَ أَصْلَ كُلِّ فِتْنَةٍ You will notice that the asl of every single tribulation, trial, hardship, humiliation, and sin, it comes from your nafs inside. وَمِنْ قِبْلِ هَذِهِ النَّفْسِ It comes from within you. You know, one of the things that was, I found always beautiful is we, used to, we hear these khutbas and the imam will say, uh, billahi min. See, y'all all know it. Shururi anfusina. Oh Allah, we seek refuge. And this is what the prophet himself, alayhi salam, used to say. Oh Allah, we seek refuge from the, from the, from the evil within. And, and, and again, it's not that there's evil. It's that when it's left unchecked, it's evil. It's when you let it control you that it's evil. But so long that you're in control, things go differently. And that's what he's going to explain to us. So he says, فَإِنْ قُلْتَ Say you have the question now. فَمَا حِيلَةُ إِذَنْ فِي هَذَا الْعَدُو How do we fight this adu? I get it, Sheikh. I get it. My, my nafs, I get it, yo. My nafs is messed up. And I realize where it's dragging me. It won't let me get up for Fajr. It won't let me read Quran. It won't let me get motivated. How do I fight it though? That's what we're here for, to learn how to win this war. He says, uh, you know, so listen. I, I know say, people say I'm a broken record with this, but I don't care. <laughs> the culture of athletics the culture of athletics is one of pushing yourself to reach your best self. It's ingrained in the concept of academic perseverance, to go be better in academics, to be better in athletics. There are people who understand that they want to get to the top of things. They realize that they have to push themselves. Uh, there was a basketball player, I forgot his name. You might remember. There was a basketball play, play, player who was in the Olympics 2008 with Kobe. Y'all know who Kobe? No, just saying. And uh, I forgot his name. And uh, he said that uh, one day we, it was training, and it was right after the finals. So Kobe had just got out of the finals, and he said that uh, what's his name? Anyone know the name yet? Chris Bosch. Yeah, Chris Bosh. That's it, Chris Bosh. So Chris Bosh, he says, uh, hear me out on this. It's gonna connect to our dean. Chris Bosch says, uh, I decided to wake up really early, that I'm going to beat everyone to breakfast. Right? I'm going to beat everyone to breakfast. I go to breakfast early, then I get on the court early, I can start training early. I'm going to beat everyone. And he says, I wake up early, and no doubt I'm the first one, but when I walk into the, to the cafeteria, I see Kobe. And hold on. He says, and I see he has ice on his knees, which means he already got it in. And he was like, I'm done. 
I was talking to a friend. I was like, that's his Abu Bakr Umar moment. <laughs> that's literally his Abu Bakr Umar moment. Where, where, where Umar ibn Khattab, there was a battle. The Prophet wasallam needed money. So he said, everyone bring everything you got. Don't hold back. Give everything you have. So Umar radiallahu anh says, my pockets were nice those, those days. Business was going great. Things were good. He said, I said to myself, today I'm going to beat Abu Bakr. Healthy competition because we realize, like, I want to become better than people, but not in dunya. I don't care about this world that much to compete with you in it. This, is, this ain't, we ain't here long, y'all. It ain't really worth it. So he said, I'm going to beat him today. I'm going to beat him today. So he went home and he brought as much as he could. And he brought, close the door if you can. I'm sorry, some of y'all come in, but close the kids is a little loud. So he brought everything that he could. When he arrived, when he arrived, subhanAllah, he brings whatever he brings. The Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, it, it, it must have been from an angel. He asked a question. He doesn't say, how much did you bring? He said, what did you leave at home? Because it doesn't matter what you brought. It matters how much you sacrifice for this cause. So he's like, oh. Well, actually, I, I left half of all my wealth at home. All assets cut in half for the sake of Allah. So he still thinks he's good until Abu Bakr comes in. Now, we don't even know how much he put on the table. But the Prophet wasallam says, Abu Bakr, how much did you leave at home? And he says, radiallahu an, I left Allah and the Rasul at home. I left nothing but you and Allah at home. We're good. Omar said, I can't beat him. <laughs> I can't beat him. My point is that there's this mujahada, this struggle to reach higher points. And here, the world knows about grinding to become better. But here's the statement I think you need to leave with. Why do people love their dunya more than you love Allah? No, nah, y'all ain't hear me. They're at the gym at 5 a.m. You're sleeping. You can't get up for Fajr. Why do they love their deen more than you love your Allah? Their, their, their dunya more. We have to realize that we love this. We sacrifice for it. We strive for it. We struggle for it. So he says, he says, how do I conquer this nafs? Everyone in here is like, I want to get up for Qiyam al-Layl tonight. I want to feel that moment. Where I, where I overcome my sleep for the sake of God tonight. What's the solution? He says, here it goes, I got you. And I'm going to connect it to what I said. Everyone knows how to grind, but we're different because we grind for Allah. You see the difference? What I'm going to talk, what we're talking about is not new to the world. The world is doing this, but they're not doing it for Allah. They're not doing it for sadaqah. They're not doing it for spirituality. They're not doing it to, to, to get closer to God. They're doing it for gains. They're doing it for image. We do this, we sacrifice, not for dunya. We sacrifice the dunya for Allah. So what does he say? Fa'lam. You know, I'm sorry, I want to read this book, but one of my teachers, he said something that just changed my life when I heard him. He said, the world is about freeing the soul. We are about freeing ourselves. I'm sorry. The world is about freeing the nafs. We are about freeing ourselves from the nafs so that it doesn't control you anymore. Mikael, I want you to get up at 4 a.m. tonight to pray to Allah because we have something special we need to talk to Allah about tonight. The nafs is like, Labek, I'm there. Labek, I'm there. I tell the nafs, nafs, I need you to lower your gaze right now because that's not good for us. The nafs like, I got you. That's what we want. We want that nafs that does what we want it to do. And that does mean you'll have to force it. That does mean in the beginning you'll have to force it. That's natural, y'all. It's natural. But the time will come where it flows beautifully from you. So what does he say? Allahu Akbar. فَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَا ذَكَرْنَا فِي مَا تَقَدَّمْ He's like, everything we said before, annaha amraha asir. He's like, yo, this is hard. This is hard. But what do we say about hard things? We do hard things, y'all. 
إذ لا يمكن قهرها بمرة كسائر العداء. You can't destroy this nafs because you need it. إذ هي المطية والآلة. This is what you'll ride to Jannah. This nafs, you can't kill it. I need you to get me up for tahajjud. I need you to give sadaqa. I need you. You know, I was talking to a sheikh about this. He said the old school, they used to try to say kill the nafs. But for us, you got to treat the nafs like, a, like a, a relative that you can't get rid of. <laughs> no, for real, for real. I wrote this down because I didn't want to mess up how I was going to say this. But you got to treat this nafs. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is a lot. You want to be my enemy, but I'm not going to give up to you. Give up, give up on you. I can't ever stop loving you because I need you, but I won't let your toxicity ruin me. I was like, that could solve some problems in our families, right? <laughs> listen, listen, I'm going to say, I can't ever stop loving you because I need you. I need my, my, my soul, myself, my, my nafs, my desire. I need that. But hold up. But I won't let you ruin me by controlling. I'm in control of this relationship. You're going to do what I tell you to do. I think a lot of people that be like trying to like flex power on other people in their families is because they don't got power over them own selves. Control yourself first. Stop trying to flex on other people. Okay, bismillah. You can't destroy this nafs. That's, too, that's bad for you. The Islam doesn't teach that. You need it. There's two things. We can't love our nafs because then we're like everyone else that just does whatever they feel like doing. I'm going to the bar tonight. I'm going to the club. I'm going here. I'm going. Why? Because I feel like it. I'm going shopping. Amazon. Target. Let's go. No Target? Okay, cool. Guys. <laughs> no Target? I hate them. Yeah, Target, yo. That's the move, yo. All right, anyways. These youngins don't know, yo. They don't know. Anyways. So, 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 subhanAllah, he says, we need, a, we need a, a, something tariqain. We can't splurge on the nafs because it becomes a spoiled brat. Legit, it becomes a spoiled brat. You just give it everything it wants. But he says, but you can't kill it. Islam doesn't tell you to do that. It tells you to take care of yourself. So what do we have to do? He says, well, you're going to have to cure the bad in it and be gentle. And here we go. Are y'all ready? He says, You have to put the brittle, the brittle. Man, I looked the word up. So there's difference of opinion on this word. <laughs> Me and my wife debated it today. She said, make sure you say it right. It's not bridal, it's brittle. Whatever, we could debate some other time. It's the thing you put in a horse's mouth. How about that? The thing you put in a horse's mouth, listen. He says this horse is what you're going to ride, this nafs, but you can't let it run free. You have to put the thing in its mouth that stops it from going where it wants to go. And that's called taqwa. Taqwa. See, me and you, we're different because we control the horse. Every sports person, every like fitness Im influencer, they all learn how to control the nafs. But we control it for Allah. We, tell, we take this horse where God wants it to go, not where our, our higher nafs wants it to go. We fast. Why do we fast? Not because we're going to lose weight from that. Yeah, it may come, but it's only because God told me to do it. So he says, you got to put this thing in the mouth of taqwa and control it with that. The inqila, he goes, uh, somebody might say, this animal, this nafs, my passions, they're reckless. Jamuhun, behimatun, sa'batun. This is a, 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 a wild horse that hasn't been broken in yet. So you got to be gentle. It needs a horse whisperer. It needs someone that cares for it. He's going to put time into it. He says, The way you will get control, the way you will break in this horse. Does everyone understand the objective here? The objective is this horse gets up for tahajjit tonight. 
That's the objective, y'all. We wake up for Qiyamul Layl tonight. We make wudu even though the water is cold. And we go, Allahu Akbar. And you will feel so free that you have overcome yourself for the sake of Allah that I kid you not, nobody could touch you that day spiritually. No one could touch you. So how do you do it? How do we break the nafs? And I told you, it's not about breaking. It's about a healthy relationship. I love you, but your toxicity is not going to ruin me. Three things. You ready? Number one. Men shahawat. Don't give it what it wants when it wants it. Don't give it what it wants when it wants it. I said it earlier, you want coffee, I want Qiyam al-Layl first. I've seen Shuyuk do this. Okay, Nafs wants some brisket today. Well, you're going to have to give me a juz of Quran today. You're going to have to give me a juz. You give me a juz, I give you the brisket. The Nafs is like, all right, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. <laughs> See, you're using that desire that the Nafs has to get it where we want all of us to be. We don't want it to not enjoy the good things of life. We want it to not live for the good things of life. You feel me? So you're going to do what I tell you to do. So the first thing you're going to do to break this nuts, isn't, isn't this in light? Like, don't you feel like equipped now? Allahu Akbar. Okay. Number two. Hamalu athqal al-ibadat alayha. Don't give it what it wants and force it to do some difficult worship. That's why I'm focusing on Qiyam al-Layl and Fajr, y'all. Getting up for Qiyam al-Layl. Everyone know what Qiyam al-Layl is, y'all? It's like uh, 30 minutes before Fajr time comes in. What time's Fajr time coming right now? Like 6.11, right? It depends which calculation you use, whatever. 30, 20 minutes before that, you set the alarm. Alarm goes off and you remember, no. Nuf says, I'm tired. You go, I know you're tired, but you're doing what I want you to do because we need Allah today. And you force it. So he says the second thing is place a burden on it. But I needed y'all to understand because some of us, we don't get it how reformative and how good that's going to feel once we push through it. And that's why I often use the analogy of sports because like when we, when we run, when we work out, when we grind, we feel the goodness afterward and we're like, I get it. And I'm promising you, all I can do is say, try it. All I can challenge you is try it for two days, three days and watch what happens to your heart. Wallahi, I promise you, you'll get addicted to it. Just like those people who run and they get in, what is that, runners like high? All of us like, you're just crazy. <laughs> Runners high, they're running, and they just get into this euphoric state, right? Just, it's just euphoria, where they're like, time doesn't pass us, and we don't feel any. But, but, but no, hold up. Hold up, hold up. You ready? Y'all want to hear something? Uthman bin Affan spent the whole night in prayer, didn't even realize Fajr time came in. He, he said, Allahu Akbar after, Allahu Akbar, and he's just reading Quran. The next thing? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, as-salatu khayru min al Oh my God. I didn't even realize what I was in. I didn't even realize. I'm trying to show you the same way someone's like, I just ran like a mer three, mer like however long, I didn't even realize. Huh? Flow state, exactly. It's amazing, amazing. So what we want, I want us to understand is that by putting that extra little burden of harder worship, you're going to lift yourself up to somewhere higher and you will love it once you get through it. But you got to trust the process. So, فَإِنَّ الْحِمَارِ إِذَا زِيدَ فِي حَمَلِهِ مَعَ نُقْسَانِ فِي عَفَلِهِ تَذَلَّلَ He's like, if you take a himar and you put a load on it and you don't feed it on its regular schedule, it will break in, it will, it will become submissive and that's what we want to do. We just want the nafs to listen to us. Number three. Al-Istiyana Billah. Al-Istiyana Billah. Ask Allah for help on your nafs. 
listen, a lot of us have trauma inside. A lot of us, when I say fight your nuffs, it's not just about like forcing ourselves. it's baggage we have. It's a father that was gone. It's a mother that was somewhere else. It's a older sibling that was something else. So trauma, if we don't deal with it, it will deal with you. And you have to talk to someone. You have to see someone that will help you. Istiana is the, sec- is the third one. Ask God for help on your nafs. And there's a dua I want everyone to learn. Allahumma, you can repeat this, write it down, record it as I say it right now, or ask me later, or ask a sister or a brother. Allahumma ati nufusana taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my nafs its taqwa. I want my taqwa. I want my taqwa. And we're going to talk about this taqwa in a moment, y'all, because what is this word taqwa? Ati nufusana taqwaha. Oh Allah, give my nafs its taqwa. Like that's, I want my taqwa. That's, that's my guide. Oh Allah, give me my nafs its saddle. Give my nafs its saddle so I can benefit from this horse. Oh Allah, purify my nafs. You are my wali, you are my mawla, you care for me. Read this dua. So what do we do? Number one. What was number one? What was number one? Don't give it what it wants. When it wants it. When The key is when. The key is when. Number two, put the burden, put a bit extra burden of ibadah. Trust me, you'll feel the pleasure of it when you get through it. And number three, seek help from God. You are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone. فَإِذَا وَاضَبْتَ عَلَى هَذِهِ الْأُمُورِ When you do these three things, in قَادَتْ لَكَ nafs. This, this, this nafs will break in by بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَهِينَ إِذِنْ At this point now, when, it, when it's calm, now you put the brittle. No, stop, bro. You put the lijam, I'm going speak Arabic. You put the lijam of taqwa. Because it's calm now. Now, this is how we're different. Other people break their nafs in. Other people get control of themselves. But they don't put the lijam of taqwa in the front. They don't guide it with taqwa. They guide it by other things. Now that it's broken in, we say, ah, you're listening to me now? Now what are we going to do? We're going to do what God wants us to do. Now that you're calm, we're going where Allah wants us to go. And I kid you not, y'all. I'll just tell you this. There's a verse where Allah says, is the one who we gave life to. You were dead. You were lost. You, were, you didn't know what life was about. Is the one who we gave life to and then gave them a light by which they walk with. Like taqwa is how you walk, y'all. Taqwa is a, is a state of being. Taqwa, we call it slip consciousness. Slip, con- remember that? Y'all remember every now and then in Dallas when it gets icy and you walk on the ice? How do you walk on the ice? Carefully, balance and weight. You don't care who watching, you look silly. You like, you don't care because you don't want to fall. You don't want to look, there's a bigger humiliation. The, the, humil- the humiliation or shyness of looking weird, balancing myself, that ain't nothing compared to the humiliation of actually falling. So I'm willing to put up with that because I'm scared of the bigger humiliation. Taqwa, Umar ibn Khattab, he was asked one day, what is taqwa? This word we hear, every imam, taqwa, taqwa, taqwa. What is taqwa? Taqwa is this. He said, have you ever walked down a, 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 a thorny road or a, a, a glassy road? How do you walk? The man said, well, you, you, you kind of like just pick up your thing and you kind of walk careful. And then he's like, that's taqwa. That consciousness with every step, that awareness, that's what taqwa is. He says, فَأَلَمْ أَوَّلًا أَنَّ تَقْوَى كَنْزٌ عَزِيمٌ it's a, it's a treasure of us that Allah has given us. Taqwa is a kanzun azizun. It's a precious treasure that God has given us. in the firta bihi. If you get it, you will find so many jewels and gems in taqwa. Wa khayrin kathir. You will find so much good in a life of taqwa. 
Shaitan tells you it limits you. I'm telling you it frees you. It frees you. It frees you from the shackles of this dunya. The life of taqwa. وَمِلْكٌ عَظِيمٌ كَأَنَّ خَيْرَاتِ الدُّنْيَا وَالْآخِرَةِ جُمِيَتْ It is as if all the good of this world and the akhirah is inside this word, taqwa. And then he says, Allah tells us in the Quran a number of things that are given to the people of taqwa. And I want to share some of those with you. Number one, إِن تَصْبِرُوا وَتَتَّقُوا فَإِنَّ ذَلِكَ مِنْ عَزْمِ الْأُمُورِ Imam Ghazali says the first thing that you will feel once you live this life of taqwa is the feeling of accomplishment. I did something difficult for the sake of God. I did something difficult. Sometimes we work out, we do something, it just feels good that I did something difficult. But what's it for the sake of Allah is different. And then he says, uh, there's another verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ This is my favorite, y'all. وَمَن يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجَ وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Allah says, whoever lives a life of taqwa, aware, slip conscious, aware of my step, where am I going, what am I doing? We will provide this person from where they never expected. And, and, I want to say something. Your spouse is your risk too, y'all. Nah, I ain't saying I know you ain't married yet. That's why I said you get taqwa. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Habibi. وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Allah will provide from you, mutaf, from where you never expected it. And, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهِ يَجَعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا I remember I, I, I learned, I remember I had converted and I was memorizing Quran. And by the grace of Allah, the first year I converted, this, I say it as a tahdith bin ni'ma. somebody paid for me to go to hajj. First year I was Muslim. Somebody was like, you want to go to Mecca? I was like, brah. <laughs> he was like, you're going. I was like, okay. And uh, I had been memorizing Quran. And I think I got to like three juz from the back of the Quran. And I knew this verse. Right? And I remember we were in the hotel in Haram. And we were going down to the haram, and I just saw this like emergency exit that said makhraj. And in my head, I'm a new convert, right? So it's just, you know, it reminded, there's a way out. Taqwa will always find you a way out of difficult situations. This verse is powerful. You live a life with taq of taqwa, consciousness of God, always know that Allah will have that door out waiting for you from that difficulty. It's beautiful. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. So he says, he says, uh, there's three things specifically I want you to realize that you will get from taqwa, y'all. Remember, I want to back up, guys. I want us to all understand the process of what we're learning today. Imam Ghazali said the first thing you need to understand is this enemy that's inside of you. You have to break this enemy. So we talked about fighting the nafs, how we're going to fight the nafs, go against what the nafs wants. We're going to put conditions on the nafs. We're going to not give it what it wants until we want it to have it. But then he said, once the nafs breaks into you and you have control, well, that's not the objective in and of itself because every Tom, Dick, and Harry has that. We control our nafs for a reason. He says, once you get control of it, now you put taqwa in its mouth. You, you put the uh, lijam of taqwa so that it guides to the place you want it to go, which is where Allah wants it to go. But now he wants you to know what you'll get from that taqwa. So he says, number one, tawfiq. Taqwa will give you Allah will enable you to do righteousness. You'll find yourself wanting to do more righteousness. I know a lot of us in this room, we're like, Sheikh, I love what you're saying, but my nafs doesn't feel like doing more good. All these pious people in here, I'm like low key, legit, like imposter syndrome. I'm not one of these people. Well, he, what he's telling you is like, no. When you start with taqwa, Allah gives you tawfiq to more good deeds. And that's why I said to you, start with tahajjud. Because the day will just open up righteousness to you. Number two, islahul amal. Your actions will become better and complete. And number three, why do we do all of this? So that he accepts it. Inna ma Allahu min al 
Allah will accept it from us. Okay. So Imam Ghazali talks a bit more about the importance of taqwa. Um, he talks about some verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about every nation, every religious community was told before us about taqwa. Then he defines taqwa. And I just want to probably end with this. I know we're getting closer to time for salah. So what is this taqwa? What is this thing we want to have? Well, I said it in our terms, it's slip consciousness. But according to Imam Ghazali, it is hiya tanzihu al-qalb an dhambin. It is to put a barrier between your heart and the sins. Like, I can't go there. No, that's off limits. He says, taqwa is a khashya or hayba. It is a consciousness of God. Consciously aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, taqwa is a, uh, it means ibadah or worship. So you're ready to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he says the true meaning of taqwa, guys, is a barrier between you and what displeases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Last paragraph, and we'll conclude for today. فَإِنْ قُلْتْ He says, if you ask me, فَفَصِلْ لَنَا الْآنْ هَذَا الْمَعْنَ فِي النَّفْسِ Imam Ghazali is an extremely practical scholar. When he writes, he's very pragmatic in his writing. It's not esoteric and just ideas, extremely practical. So he says, you may be asking me, so what? How do I apply taqwa to my life? How do I actually apply this? I love your concepts, but how does, what does taqwa look like in my life? That's what I'm here for. He goes, فَإِنَّ الْحَاجَةَ جَاءَتْ مِنْ هُنَالِكَ The whole reason we're having this conversation is because I want my nafs to have taqwa. So how do you actually do it? لِنَعْلَمْ كَيْفَ نُلْجِمْ هَذَا النَّفْسِ بِهَذَا الْمَعْنَى We want to know how to put this lijam uh, on, this uh, uh, thing on, uh, taqwa onto this nafs. How? He says, وَأَمَّا الَّذِي لَا بُدَّ مِنْهُ هَا هُنَا I'll tell you right now the minimum you have to know. He says, "Men arada an yattaqillah, Whoever wants to have taqwa, they have to only watch five limbs of their body. They have to watch closely five parts of themselves. Five parts of themselves. He says, number one, al ain, your eyes. What do you allow yourself to look at? What do you allow yourself to see? The eyes are a gateway to the soul. Whatever you're looking at is going straight into your heart. Straight into your heart. And we look at more media than fathomable in previous generations. Constant influences onto your heart. Constant. I ask yourself, if you're struggling with spirituality, let me see your, 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 your can I see your um, screen time, please? Random? Random? Hate them. Nah, I ain't gonna do you like that. No, seriously, guys. To next week, he'll talk specifically about the eyes. I've said before to all the brothers and sisters in the room, especially the brothers, I think that the door to becoming a friend of God in our time is just controlling your gaze. That's it. Wallahi, if you just do that, friend of God, yo. Doors of Jannah. Knock. We heard about you down there, yo. You the real one. <laughs> no, because it's so much now. It's so much. It's so much. If you just master this, next level. So number one, al ain, wal udun, Allahu akbar. What you listen to, you know, when hearing becomes listening. You know what I mean? Wal <laughs> qalbu, you have to watch your heart. We'll talk a little bit about that. What are you feeling? Your jealousy, your anger, all of those things. We'll talk about it. Wal batanu. So this is amazing. When I first used to read this, he says your stomach, what you eat. What's amazing is now we are so conscious of these alternative diets and how, how it's important to watch what you eat outside of religion. Imam Ghazali and the scholars of Islam have long said, if you want to become a better, better believer, watch your diet. Watch your intake. Watch your caloric intake. Master that. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he said, you know the hadith, one-third food, one-third drink, one-third air. That's it. Master, subhanAllah. So he says these five areas, what are they, y'all? The eyes. What are you looking at all day? Udun, what are you listening to, y'all? 
What lisan? What do you, oh, I skipped that. My bad. The tongue. The tongue. See, the tongue is crazy. I don't want to get into it. But the tongue is crazy because your ears are the first thing to hear what you say. So, so the tongue actually comes from the heart, but it influences the heart. That's why they say when you do dhikr, when you're like, Allah, Allah, Allah. Yes, it's coming from you, but you're the first one getting it. You're the first one hearing that, y'all. Yeah? Like, Allahu Akbar. Wal-lisan wal-qalb. Fayahrisu alayha bisiyanatin laha. You got to protect these gateways, y'all. Yeah? You have to protect what you see. You got to be, how about this? You have to be a conscious consumer of your feed. Yeah, your feed. You have to be a conscious consumer. Curate that thing real quick. And kulli Everything that will harm you spiritually. Now, real quick, I know we're going to wrap up. Everything that will harm you, why is that important? We're all different. You may be able to consume certain things, but I can't. My diet is different than your diet because my threshold for certain things is different from yours. You might be lactose intolerant. I'm like, I love me some milk. <laughs> so your, your feed has to be for you, y'all. What's harmful to your spiritual development? So he says, you want to protect these five limbs from mimasia, sin, haram, fudul, extravagance in halal. We're going to talk about this in detail. When you have protected these five areas, see, look, why is this so pragmatic? Because before this, you heard khutbas, oh, have taqwa, have taqwa. And you're like, all right, I would love to. What do I do? He's like, let me spell it out for you. Your eyes, this is what we're going to do. Your ears, this is what we're going to do. Your tongue, this is what we're going to do. Your heart, this is what we're going to do. And the food you eat, this is what we're going to do. He goes, when you have done this, you protect these areas. It is hope that the rest of your body will be good. You will be, you will be great. You will be a strong believer. You will have lived a life of a muttaqi person. Believe in yourself. I'm going to end with this, yo. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe in yourself, yo. There's a gate in, into Jannah. There's gates into Jannah. One of those gates got your name on it, yo. But you got to believe in you. You got to believe in you. You got to get rid of the fear. You got to believe in you that you can reach those heights. I'll end with this. I said it before. You're somebody's ancestors. Act like it. You're somebody's great-grandmother. Act like it. I'm somebody's grandfather, y'all, who ain't even alive yet, obviously. <laughs> but I ain't living life for me. I'm living life so they could be like, yo, y'all remember granddad? You too are somebody's ancestors. So live like it. May Allah give us the ability to overcome our nafs. May Allah give us the ability to control our nafs. May Allah give us the ability to, to push our nafs to the good of this world and the good of the akhirah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta. Nastaghfir wa atubu ilayk. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifun. Wa salamun ala al-mursaleen. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. InshaAllah.